Hey team, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Today, we've got five steps to grow your teaching business. And if you're new here, my name is Melissa. It's good to have you. Today, we're going to look at these five steps and I want to share them because it's what I've used to grow my own teaching business. This is what I do daily in order to scale and grow so that I can be more present in my home life. But that's why I'm offering this for completely free. It's based on a workbook that I created, which is linked below. You're welcome to pick that up for free. Um, and I want you to do it your way. Take a look at that workbook. Take a look at these five steps. We're going to get going right here and get you started on scaling and growing your business. Let's go. The first step is finding out who you're serving. This has different names in different circles. Some may call it a niche. Some may call it your ICA, your ideal client avatar. Um, a lot of times these people are going to come once we figure out our purpose statement. So I'm actually going to steer us there for a second. Now, a purpose statement um, for me, it looks like this. I help someone, a person or a group, do or become something like the target action so that they can dream outcome, do something. So for me, again, I help teachers launch and scale their businesses so that they can be more present in their homes. Um, this is something that I would love for you to take a second and think about. Pause if you'd like, or go grab that workbook and go ahead and start jotting it down. There is space for you to do that in there. And I would love for you to get that in mind so that then everything else that you're going to do to scale and grow is based on this. The second thing is to nourish your best income stream. Now, I'm assuming that you've already got some sort of income. If you've got a teacher business that you're trying to scale, I assume that there's something already there. So when you look at your income, is there one source of income? Maybe two? Choose the one that's bringing in the most. Again, teaching is lovely. Teaching is great. Teaching is a calling. However, it's also our business. It's our income. So the income actually matters to us. And we need to go ahead and make sure that we're maintaining that, nourishing that in order to continue to bring in money each month and then also grow later on. But first, continue to nourish it. But that starts with identifying it. So go ahead, write down what is your best income stream, and then we can look at scaling. The reason why we're going to do this is to then optimize it, right? We need income, but then we also need to make some space. I don't know about you, but I got 24 hours in a day. And so I can't spend that same amount of time and then anticipate adding more hours to the day so that I can then scale and grow. It doesn't work like that. So we need to optimize what we're already doing. This might look like more efficient lesson planning. It might look in, like investing in some resources or even a person like a VA, a virtual assistant, to help you get some of those other tasks done in order to then spend more time on growing and scaling. Um, for me, this looks like investing in curriculum so that I don't have to lesson plan for as long. It looks like learning how to do um, more productive ways of planning and organizing my business. For example, I use Notion to lesson plan and keep track of all my finances. I also use tools like Nearpod, um, which don't cost anything. <laughs> Nearpod is free. Um, and so there's just ways that we can um, optimize our time, use our time more wisely to then use that time, allocate that time toward growing and scaling. Step number three is figuring out what you're working with. Here's what I mean by that. When we want to talk to our niche, to our ICA about the different ways that we can help, we need to figure out how we can do that. What do you have available to you? There are three things that we definitely should not ignore, but there are lots more that you could choose. These are just the three that we really can't ignore as teachers. If you're already teaching, you probably have a student base you could actually tap as a resource here. Ask them, tell them, hey, I have this time open or this time open. Would you be willing to reach out to friends and family who might be interested in class with me as well? This is one way to grow your student base, but this could also be a way to scale toward group classes, toward um, camps, things like that, that can then um, make your hour more profitable rather than a simple one-on-one -on -one class. Nothing wrong with the one-on-one -cl one class, but we are starting to scale and grow. The second thing would be social media. So my question would be, do you already have a business-focused account or would you consider opening one up? Um, you could also consider opening a Facebook group. I have one where I talk about the things that I really like, like ed tech and curriculum and teaching platforms and helping teachers navigate those better. Um, and then 
Consider creating multi-purpose content each week. It brings high value information and then package it in multiple different ways. Um, YouTube videos, shorts and reels, posts, polls, emails, among others, you get to choose. But the idea here is that we're starting to ramp up that social media presence so that you can tell your ICA and your niche about what you're offering. Otherwise, they don't know. So consider that one. The third option that we should not ignore as teachers is the opportunity to become an affiliate for different tools and brands that we already use. Now, for me, here's what it looked like. I used a few different tools and I said, hey, I really like this. Can I keep talking about this? And they said, sure, we'll create an affiliate program for you. Great. That was awesome. Then as I started to tell people about the tools that I loved, I started realizing that lots of the other tools that I already used had affiliate programs set up. Fantastic. Post those on your social media, your link tree, something so that you can share with your ICA about the tools that they might find useful. You're making their life easier by saying, hey, here's something I use. You might like it too. Again, you're providing answers to common challenges and questions in your niche. All of this ties back to your social media presence and your ICA so that you can share more and more. And it's actually really cool because you probably will get a small stream of income there as an affiliate. Now, step four gets pretty exciting. This is where we're going to try something new. You're going to want to try to branch out and grow your teaching business. Now, there's lots of ways that you could do this. A few of them are passive and some are a little bit more labor intensive, but the idea here is the same, that you're trying to grow. So I would suggest choosing from a list. And now I, in the workbook, I've created a whole list for you, but if it's helpful for you to go ahead and think about some of the ideas that have already been swirling in your mind, go ahead and do that. This might include something like products, selling teaching resources or products on a place like TPT or Nuggets of Wisdom or Teach Simple. All of those are options. You can also branch out to be a little bit more independent. Use something like I do with Koji or Shopify. Those are also options to sell your resources. You could work as a virtual assistant. You could do content creation for brands. You could lead and train train other teachers, check out the landscape and see how you could better serve the people you're already in contact with. We had talked about affiliate marketing. Maybe this looks like ramping up your efforts to refer teachers to platforms or refer students to platforms. You can also look at other forms of teaching or coaching. Perhaps you're going from teaching um, stock classes on a platform to maybe moving to a marketplace like OutSchool or AllSchool. You could teach classes for homeschool groups. Homeschool's on the rise, friends, says a homeschooling mom. Uh, so go ahead and look at how you could serve the home homeschooling community. You could move from one-on-one -on -one to niche group classes. I have a video on this. You can check that out here. And then also one-on-one -on -one or group coaching. Um, I do this in my own business. I offer Slack coaching. That doesn't require me to be at my computer 24 seven, but I can serve my clients well when they need help by offering this flexible form of coaching. It's all available to you. You just need to go ahead and take action. So figure out what your next steps could be, figure out what feels comfortable to you as you grow your business your way and write those ideas down. Step five. Oh, such a fun one is connecting, connect with other people, look around, everybody's running a race, look around and see who's near you. Then look back down and keep going. Do your best, do your best, then look back up. See who's still around. You want to make sure you are going to connect with people who are doing awesome, excellent work um, and who are kind of tangential to you. These are the people you may want to consider linking up with. Now, this could happen in a few different ways. Consider creating a mutually beneficial support group. I've actually done this with a group of three other teacher creators who are running kind of a similar race to me. We don't pay anything. We just meet up once a month and we have a Slack channel where we share tips and ideas and run our ideas past each other. You could also work on a collaboration project together. This could be a video, a set of reels, inviting them to a live. There are lots of different ways that this could pan out, but each of us kind of has a niche, right? We've already established that. And so lean into that niche, see how you could help someone else and how they could help you. You could also do a link swap or an email takeover where you feature other teacher creators and their products in your emails. Another option. But the point is, this will grow your audience through increased exposure, in addition to helping you grow professionally with new ideas and inspiration. I learned so much from these other teachers that I've gotten the chance to work with, and I hope you will too. That's why I put them out there on my social media as well. As Ashley D. Mercurio says, collaboration over competition, and that is so, so true. So go ahead and link up with people who are running that same race. So we've boiled it down to five steps. 
Are you going to take action? That's my challenge to you. This is me knocking on your screen and saying, will you take action next? That's why I've created this free workbook. Go ahead and grab it in the description. It's going to be super helpful to get you writing down these ideas. Then they're in stone, they're written down. You can then take action on them. Use them as a planning mechanism or just a jumping off point to get you started on your next step to growing and scaling your teaching business. If today's video was helpful for you, it would be super helpful for me if you wouldn't mind hitting subscribe and hitting like. That helps this video get out to more people. And I'm excited to hear how you're growing your business. Let me know your next step in the comments below and happy teaching.